Welcome back watch people. Now coming up in a minute, I've got an exclusive interview with a viewer who tells us about his watch robbery experience. And it's an interview that you really shouldn't miss. But before we get into that, let me tell you what's coming up in the next couple of days. And I also want to answer one or two of my critics who have left me messages and comments um, over the last 40 hours. Guys, look, I need to make something absolutely clear to each and every single person that watches my videos. Um, and I can't be any more blunt than tell you exactly what I'm all about and what my channel's all about. Guys, look, if you want fluffy videos, I've said this before, if you want fantastic videography, if you want positive, happy videos, then I'm not always going to be your first port of call because what I'm all about is 40 years in the watch business, 40 years of spending my life around people and the watch game. And it's my channel's about telling you the truth behind the scenes. It's about telling you things that no one else is gonna tell you. It's about tackling subjects that no one else wants to tackle or is perhaps even more importantly, is prepared to tackle. Um, I can't promise you happy, fluffy videos. Um, I'll do my best to make some of them as bright as I possibly can. Um, but right now we're in the middle of a campaign where we're trying to get Rolex to reinstate the much needed official lost and stolen register. Um, we're right in the middle of that campaign. And on that note, I've got a statement already done and prepared that I've made for you guys after receiving an official response. No, not the one that we all received, a further official response from Rolex to my appeal to them um, to reinstate that lost and stolen register. I have an official reply to that, which I'm gonna make public within the next couple of days. Um, again, it's not a positive video, but it's one that anyone that's interested in watches really should watch. And um, please understand guys, I'm not here for anyone's entertainment necessarily. I'm here to tell you the truth and if as someone said to me in a comment that they left earlier today that they unsubscribed from my channel because I was too negative, then that's fine. There are plenty of other channels out there that can offer you what you're looking for. All I can do is continue to work on your behalf to make your watch wearing experience better, safer, your shopping experience better, safer, um, and your knowledge about watches and the watch industries and the watch industry better and safer for your benefit, it's not for my benefit, guys. I don't need to make these videos. This is for you, not for me. Um, I don't have, contrary to what some people might think, I don't have an ego. I don't make these videos um, from an egotistical viewpoint. Guys, let's get into the interview and hear from someone who I think has a very interesting story to tell. So we're gonna welcome Ben to the show now, and unfortunately, Ben has been a victim of watch crime um, not in the not too distant past. Uh, ben, thanks for coming onto the show, uh, welcome, and um, would you mind, if it's not too painful at least, to tell us your story? Thanks so much for having me, Paul, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, sure, with pleasure. Uh, so this was July of 2019, um, I was out at night with my girlfriend. It was about 12 midnight at the time. And uh, we were walking through central London, uh, through the Mayfair and St. James area. We were just going for, uh, for an evening stroll. Uh, we thought it was just a casual one, which we'd done many times before. Um, and then we got towards uh, Green Park Station, just by the Ritz. And I had this nagging feeling. I wasn't feeling quite well, but I couldn't really explain quite what it was. Uh, so I told my girlfriend, well, let's go back home. And um, we took some side streets to get back towards uh, Marlebone. And um, we, it, we were just the two of us walking down a quiet street and uh, didn't think about anything, didn't have any, any thoughts at all, uh, just enjoying the moment. And before we knew it, uh, four to five Individuals jumped on me from behind, put me down onto the pavement, started punching and kicking and pulling at my wrist. Uh, they were shouting to give me, um, you know, for me to give them my watch. Now, in that moment, you have a split second to decide, am I going to fight this or am I going to surrender and let go and, 
uh, let them have what they want. And in that split second, I did decide to let them have what they wanted. I also had the consideration uh, of my girlfriend. I had no idea, you know, if she was being harmed at this point. I was on the floor. You know, it happened so fast, the, the, whole, the whole scenario. So I just let go. I let them grab at the watch. They were pulling at it, yanking at it. Um, the moment one of the gentlemen uh, took it off my wrist, they all scattered and ran in multiple directions. And this was uh, on Hanover Street. So literally right in front of you, you have uh, Regent Street and the Apple Store just ahead of you to the left-hand mm -hmm. side. Um, so we were literally only a few steps away from, from uh, Regent Street at that time. Um, and after they dispersed, uh, my girlfriend was obviously in shock. I was in, I was in shock as well. You know, this, this happens so quickly and you don't expect it. Um, and then we had some, some innocent passerbys come running to us asking us what happened. And a few of the gentlemen tried to run after uh, the guys uh, that, that stole, stole my watch, uh, but to no, uh, to no success, really. It's a horrible story, but unfortunately one that's not too unfamiliar with me. I mean, my first question is, Ben, how does it leave you feeling? What has it done to you? Um, how has it affected you? Because I think a lot of people perhaps always think the first thing that comes to their mind is the loss of the watch, but that's not always necessarily the most painful thing that you're left with, is it? No, absolutely, I agree. Initially, right after the incident, I looked over to my girlfriend to make sure that she was okay. She was luckily unhurt, you know. Uh, all the guys had jumped on me. One of them had actually stayed with her so that she wouldn't interfere in the process, uh, but she was completely unarmed, and she also had a watch on. It wasn't a Rolex. It was a Cartier. Uh, they probably thought it wasn't worth, uh, worth their while. Um, and, you know, for me, I was in shock. After coming over that, that little phase of shock, uh, you try to process uh, what had, you know, what had just, what had just happened. So I think so many people have gone through a similar experience. I mean, before the incident happened to me, my friends and, and acquaintances had told me, Ben, you're crazy. Why are you wearing such a nice watch, you know, walking through London? And I had, I had heard this story over and over of, of people who have had incidents. And I thought, this is never going to happen to me. Uh, similar to a gentleman you had on the show uh, previously, he also thought it was never going to happen to him. But then it happens to you, and you you reassess how how, how you how you do things and how how you think about things and what priorities you have. And so for me, it was definitely our health and well being first. So that that was fine. Um, and then obviously, secondly, it comes to comes to the watch, and that's obviously gone. So we had to go through the process of what you do afterwards. But it is true that the psychological, firstly, the physical was fine for me. I mean, I was bruised and you know shaken, but. I could have been much worse. I've heard much worse stories as you have when people have had severe injuries, broken bones, and even worse. Uh, so we were very fortunate in that sense. Um, but the psychological trauma does stay on with you for a little bit so that you, you make peace with it, you accept it, you go through the process of it um, to, to, find, to find a calm and to find resolve. You know, I'm, I really made sure that through that process it was, it was a life-learning lesson for me um, and you, you try to grow through it as an individual in a very calm way. I was never angry, if you will, at, at the people who, who carried this out. I was always soul-searching for myself to see, you know, you know, where I stand, what was the reason for this happening, and, uh, and trying to, to, to improve moving forward. Obviously, uh, you know, th this is an unfortunate event, but it did, it did recalibrate me in a way energetically as well to, to uh, you know, see things in a slightly different uh, light. Where do you think these guys spotted you and your watch, Ben? So I'm, I'm pretty confident. I mean, this is organized crime. Uh, I would believe if, if it wasn't the four or five of them, it was probably one person who had followed me, probably from the Piccadilly uh, area. Uh, when I had that bad sensation, I intuitively think that that was, that was a time we were probably being followed for that distance is about 10 minutes, I would say. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. And they had, uh, they had then communicated to the group of uh, other gentlemen who were waiting for me in a quiet alley 
to take the opportunity to jump on me from behind, and uh, you know, I was I was helpless at that point. Um, so, so I have no doubt that that was the case. And I've heard similar stories where uh, people have been in restaurants and they've been, you know, people are waiting for them outside until they get into their Uber and they get back home, etc. So. Uh, I have no no doubts that they have been following me for for at least ten minutes prior to the incident. Yeah, for the benefit of you know people watching this video, in my experience at least, that is one of their unfortunate methods, and that is to use spotters. Um, and that means that one person will do the spotting and relay that information um, to his partners in crime. And it seems pretty much that that's what you were a victim of, Ben. Tell us a little bit about the watch. Let's have the details. Let's see if we can, you know, it's a long shot, but you never know. Give us the full details about the watch that you had stolen. Yeah, sure. So this was a Rolex Datejust 41. It was the rose gold and steel version with the Jubilee uh, bracelet and the fluted bezel. Uh, it's reference number 126331. And the serial number is R43X4433. And the dial color? The dial color was chocolate, so the brown dial color. What advice would you have for anyone listening to this video today? Because look, Ben, I'll be honest, you know, in the last few days at least, you know, I've been making a lot of videos, I've been very active, and I've come under a little bit of criticism from people that say, my channel is too negative and that I don't focus enough on the positives. You know, my own personal view is that look, I come from a real world background and there's a lot of channels out there if it's, you know, positives you're looking for. But I think I bring people real news. What what message would you have to those people and to, to others who, who feel that it, it won't happen to them? Yeah, I mean, definitely I really respect the fact that you are looking at, I would say, the negative or more dark side of what's going on because that's the reality. I mean, there's, there's the good and the bad and there's an equal amount of the both. And if you're just telling one side of the story, well, you're not getting the full picture. Um, I would really recommend, I mean, as always, to be, to be aware of your surroundings, to, to be vigilant, um, to think twice about how you present yourself going out, even if it's at the expense of, if you want to say your freedom uh, and, and your expression of, the things you love, whether it's your watch or any anything else. Um, so, so to take care of that and to, to be conscious of the fact that there are people out there with bad intentions and they are, it doesn't just happen by chance. This is targeted, this is calculated, and, um, you know, no matter how, you know, street-wise or street-smart you may be, you can also be a victim of, of the similar crime. And uh, there are so many innocent people out there who, who have experienced um, the same thing. So, for example, for me, I, I've definitely changed my attitude towards wearing, wearing a nice watch when I'm walking through town, whether it's during the day or at night, irrespective. Um, so I would personally recommend that for people as well. Um, but that's, I mean, everyone makes their own decision. And it's easy for people to judge in general about, you know, oh, you shouldn't have done this. This was a red flag. That was a red flag. But everything is obvious in hindsight. Um, so it really, it's, uh, it's, it's very personal. And unfortunately, these things do really happen. It is a serious problem in London and many cities around, around the world. So, Ben, you're a, serious, uh, you're a victim of serious assault of aggravated robbery. Um, tell us a little bit about the aftermath and the police's investigation. What can you tell us about that? Sure. So, uh, later that day, it was in the morning time, I had contacted the police. I had uh, told them my story, um, and I subsequently received a crime number. Um, I had been, in the beginning, in touch with the police every three to four days, but it was a very one-sided exchange in the sense that I was continuously following up with them via email and calling them and just making sure that my case was still alive, it was still hot, and they were still pers uh, pursuing it. Um, and then one day I got a call from one of the officers, and uh, he had told me, even though I, you know, even though I was a victim of, of a robbery outside an area where there's many, there are many CCTV 
CCTVs, even the, the exact spot where I uh, was put to the ground, there was CCTV there as well. Um, but the officer had admitted to me that only about 30% of the CCTV cameras are actually live functioning and recording. Uh, the others are either empty boxes or live boxes, but just not recorded, uh, recording. And uh, I, was quite, I was quite shocked by that fact. Um, subsequently, um, the communication started to, started to fizzle a bit, and I continued to try to get new updates and see if there's anything else happening. But eventually, the, the last sort of nail in the coffin was that they had looked at all the tapes around the area. They had not spotted the, the, um, the thieves uh, who had committed this crime, um, and that was basically it. The, the, the case was closed, and they would get in touch with me if uh, they ever find the perpetrators or if they ever found my watch. And so I'm, I'm waiting now just over, uh, over a year, uh, and I've had no, uh, no updates since. I hate to say this, Ben, but I think not only have you been a victim of crime, but in my own personal opinion, you've also been a victim of the police's lip service as well in some instances. I don't know if you feel that way yourself, but look, at the end of the day, you know, we're talking about a city that is probably more heavily covered by CCTV than any other city in the world, yet the police are telling you that of all the hundreds of thousands of CCTV cameras that are situated in central London, none of them managed to pick up any five of the attackers. That, that's correct. And, you know, they, they also explained to me that they're very short of staff, they're underfunded, and I really feel like their, their resources are limited and they don't consider watch crime or any kind of uh, crime where your possession is removed from you serious enough for them to allocate the limited and finite resources that they have. Now, I don't find that a justified uh, excuse. And what are the people paying for if, uh, if not their security? But this, this is what it is. And uh, I myself, uh, instead of trying to fight that system, do the best that I can to uh, retrieve my watch through the various methods, including uh, reporting it to Rolex, including reporting it to the AD that I purchased the watch from, the watch registry, Rolex forums, and, and a few other online forums uh, where the community has been overwhelmingly uh, supportive and kind and, and helpful in, in doing their part to try to help me uh, get my watch back as well. And in return, um, this has spawned um, a, a, um, a stolen watch registry that I have created to help other people who have gone through a similar experience, which is called Valuables Recovery, where the general public and anybody at all could uh, report their own watch or uh, their watch lost or stolen uh, on the database. The whole thing leaves you with a rather bitter taste in your mouth, doesn't it? And the whole thing can start to eat away at you, can't it? Uh, absolutely. Um, it's very easy to lose faith in, in the goodness of people um, and uh, kind of give up on on, on trusting people, uh, which is which is you know difficult enough in itself, uh, but this you know when you have something removed from yourself, you know this uh, this possession, and you're being physically violated, and your space is being inter you know interfered, um, and and the psychological trauma. You know I'm quite fortunate that I have a history in in life coaching and and a qualification in that, and I'm, I'm able to sort of help myself, if you will, to the best way possible. But there's so many people who had this trauma happen to them and they're dealing with it every single day and they're, they're bitter about it, they're sour about it, and, and it just keeps eating away at them. And I think it, it would be really healthy for, that, for those individuals to, to speak up, to, to share their story, to speak to people like yourself, to speak to um, friends, family, maybe a therapist if they need to, in order to really let go of this experience so they can continue living their lives they had prior to this incident and make the necessary changes um, in their lives, uh, whether it's related to their, to their valuables or otherwise, to, to, to live a healthy and, uh, and, and good life and, and not give up hope uh, that, that there are good people out there because there truly are some exceptional people out there. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, I think it's a great message that you put over there. And I would 
you know, like to agree with you and what you said about the police. I, I, I do appreciate, I mean, I'm a big critic of the police, as you know. Um, I accept that they have limited resources. Um, I just think that in instances like yours and like my own and other people's that I've spoken to, the injustice of being robbed and violated, as you say, is then followed by what seems to be another injustice by or when the police seem unable or even unwilling to help that kind of just rubs salt in, into the a very sore wound doesn't it absolutely i couldn't i couldn't agree with you more i mean the last thing you know you you want after such an incident not only do you have to resolve that with yourself but you want some i wouldn't say sympathy but you want to feel like there is a process that you are due um, in order to, you know, to have this, to have the assistance from law enforcement, you know, that's what they're there for, right? To, to, to write these quote unquote wrongs in whatever, you know, in whatever means they have and the resources they have to do so. But it does, it does definitely leave a sour, uh, taste in your mouth. Um, but this, this, this is unfortunately the reality we have now. Can we do more to, to, you know, facilitate you know, uh, this for other people who experience crime, there's absolutely other ways that, that, that could help in terms of supporting people who have gone through a similar experience than that we have. Ben, it's been amazing talking to you, my friend. Um, you know, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I wish you all the best in your own project. And, um, you know, let's hope we can have some luck and maybe one day your watch might show up again. Absolutely, and likewise for yours, Paul. Thank you so much for having me on and, and the amazing work that you do to uh, inspire and to bring awareness to the community uh, in everything related to the watch industry. It's really, it's really much appreciated.